Hello all you lovely Kerbonauts out there, my name's Redneck Einstein and today I'm bringing you Kerbal version 0.25. Now what I wanted to show you today was a new design I'm working on. It's pretty much an all-purpose rocket. I've got a rover built into the top which I can decouple. Uh, it's got battery power, it's got all the scientific instruments it needs, it has electric generators, six wheels, so hopefully giving me better control over the surface of any planet I'm on. And these little rockets here, the LV-1Rs, they're to, once I've decoupled this from the main landing ship, or the main rocket, I can land it safely on the surface. And just looking at it, it should work. Anyway, also attached to the top, I have a little tiny probe, which has also a little electric generators as the Kerbal Engineer Redux uh, system so I can understand how much Delta V I have. Got a little, I think that's a graviolite detector, and a little sensor array nose cone so I can find out what data I'm gonna, so I can find out those data, hopefully. I'm not 100% sure exactly what data that reads out, but this is just a proof of concept. Anyway, so I built quite a complicated looking um, rocket to go with this so let's take it onto the launch pad and see what it can do I've sorted out all the staging and everything and hopefully all should be well now in initial testing there is some problem with its uh, vertical takeoff in that it's tilting one way which you'll see fairly shortly okay so here we are on the launch pad let's just brighten it up a little bit get some daylight there we go all right, so I press T, turn on the monopropellant. You see the monopropellant tanks there and the little monopropellant thrusters, RCS thrusters, sorry. All right, turn up the velocity and off we go. So you can see instantly it's starting to tilt to the left, but I've got corrective measures in the form of these RCS thrust blocks, so that's kind of helping it a little bit. And plus these solid fuel boosters are only designed for the initial takeoff phase anyway, so once I get rid of them, I can straighten out the um, angle which I'm approaching orbit, so that's not a problem. This is only going to be a short video, it's just uh, to show you my ship really. Uh, hopefully I'll bring you a landing and everything soon. Uh, I've already landed a variant of it on the moon, but I really want to get to Minmus, so I've kind of been redesigning it with extra fuel capacity in hand. Uh, yeah, so that's the aim. But let's, let's complete a bit more of the takeoff just to show you the stages. There we go. So now, once we're on the liquid fuel burners, liquid fuel rockets, you can see it instantly it straightens out. That's not a problem. The idea is I can drive across the surface of any planet and find out lots of data about it. I've got a little soil sample system here, which is to do with the Kerbal attachment system and the uh, Kerbatap life support um, system. I'm in the process of building biomes and uh, living quarters on the Minmus, so that's all part of my plans. But this is going to be the next generation rover, hopefully, based on this. It might end up being a bit bigger, kind of like a catapult design, but it all depends on how heavy it will be and how much weight, um, yeah, how much weight it has, and how much fuel it needs to take off to get to whichever planet I'm going to go to. It's not, it's kind of forget what I'm doing here. I'll complete as much of this mission as I can in time available. Alright, let's just speed up things a little bit. Whoa, oh, that didn't work. Uh oh, it's going crazy. Look at that, it's bending. Ah! Whee! <laughs> oh, it's just a proof of concept right now. If I hadn't speeded up the physics engine, that wouldn't happen. But never mind, it's all part of the fun. There we go, we're heading back up into orbit now. I want to find that 90 degree marker. There it is. Spin our ship right round again. Q and E you can use to rotate your ship across its vertical axis. There we go. So we're nearly going to be in orbit here. So check out where we're going to be. So our apoapsis, you want to keep that around 70, 75,000 meters. It gives you a good, um, a good sort of distance away from Kerbin so you don't have too much gravity acting on you. So if I tilt it this way, you can see the Kerbin apoapsis starts to decrease to get it towards um, 70, 75,000 meters, like I said. Um, we run out of fuel here. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you for now. I think you'll agree it's a pretty neat little design for the for the rover. Could be multi-purpose. Some of the problems I have with the design are um, in what do you call it symmetry. It's not quite working in symmetry, so I'm having to do a lot of the build by eye. And uh, that's probably why it tilts to one side actually on takeoff, but never mind. Alright guys, so hopefully like I said I'll show you this landing on a planet very soon. Thank you for watching and yeah, see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back everyone. Redneck Einstein here attempting to land my rocket and land uh, rover on the moon. Here we go. We're pretty close to the moon now, only 49,000 meters above the surface. I'm just burning off all my horizontal velocity and then hopefully we'll start plummeting to the surface. I'm pretty sure I've got enough fuel now. I'm just, when I land, I'll be landing on the wheels. So these little engines here won't be there. Uh, theoretically, at this point, if I wanted to, I could decouple this probe, which I might do. Let me just save it quickly there. Let's decouple the probe. And try and control that quickly. All right, so we got an. There we go. That's our that's our little probe. So that's pretty neat. All right, so we can fire up the engine. It's a little uh, electric propulsion system. It doesn't seem to be working. Why not? Activate engine. Ah, now it's working. Okay, and as you can see, it's decelerating now. It's very very slow, but it's pretty cool. So let's uh, see what we can do with this. We can log gravity data. As you can see, there's no data to be got because um, I've got everything already. The instrument surveys for changing in the changes in the field of the moon. Okay, so can we do anything with this? It's not letting me do anything with that for some reason. But as a proof of concept, it's pretty damn cool. So let's see. So at the moment, that would be landing on the surface of the moon. But that's fine. I'm not really bothered what happens to that right now. just wanted to show you what, what can happen with it. Let's switch to my other rocket. And prepare for a bumpy landing. Okay, so we want to burn off more horizontal velocity. You can see that on the bottom, on the bottom center of the screen there. If we can get that down to zero, that would be all our horizontal velocity gone. So we need to decouple those engines. And now we're on these tiny little rockets up here. So let's wait a little bit. Let's see where our landing's going to be. Focus. There we go. So currently we're going to be landing over there in a nice little crater. And we are descending, so I think I might leave that as it is. And fast forward a little bit. Okay. Fast forward a bit more. Not bad. Quick save is your friend here, because you can easily mess up these landings. I've done it many times, even on live streams, so don't worry about that. Just press the F5 button, quick save, and then hold down F9 if you want to recover that quick save. Okay, we're gonna need to slow down here. Activate the engines, Captain. So you can see we're speeding up a lot right now. But hopefully we've got enough fuel here to get rid of all that velocity. It doesn't look like we will, to be honest. I might need my friend F9. Probably left it too late, but let's see. Could have a nice catastrophic landing to watch. <laughs> Who cares? Uh -oh. Coming in fast, 270 meters per second. Woohoo, that's fast. Oh god, oh god. Just left it too late, I think. Still 200 meters per second to go. Oh no, he's left it too late. Ah! Prepare for a bumpy landing. Boom! Whoa, crap. <laughs> Damn, cuz. As I said, hold down F9 and you can recover to where you were before. Alright, let's have a look now. Okay, so we're coming down fast. Remember, we're going to need to start burning here, I think. Get rid of that horizontal velocity across the planet. The easiest way to land is literally to get rid of all the horizontal velocity. So you're literally sort of hovering ab above the ground without moving across it. And then you can literally position your ship um, and burn to slow down your velocity to about 6 meters per second or less to get a sort of smooth landing. So if you can manage that... I'll show you what I mean in a minute, it's just get rid of all this horizontal velocity, like I said. Pressing Alt and the uh, full stop key right now, I think it's called something else elsewhere, but we call it the full stop key here in England. Alright, still got enough fuel. That looks pretty flat where we're going to be landing, cool. I think we 
we've got enough fuel. There we go, that's most of our horizontal velocity gone, so let's speed up again. So that's going to take forever. Press F5 just to be sure. There we go, so this is what I mean. Literally, when you, when you land, if you've got rid of that velocity across the surface, you can just angle your ship so it's plummeting straight down, and then you can start burning again your engines to, you know, land slowly and safely at, like I said, about 6 meters per second. So, still 7,000 meters above the surface. We've got 45 fuel left. Let's try and land this bad boy in one piece. Start firing up the engines. Looks like you're coming down fast. Now, the ship design is important here. If you've designed your ship with plenty of fuel in reserve but not too much weight, then you'll land no problem. But I'm cutting it a bit fine here. I'm not sure exactly sure if this is going to work. Quite close. Ah, we've got a shadow coming in now. That's good. All right. Very close to the surface now. Speed up again. There we go. We're coming down. Still too fast. 24 meters per second. Turn on our engines again. Get that down to about. That'll do. Now it's going to start accelerating again. The reason it accelerates towards the surface again is because of gravity, even though it's minimal on the moon, it's still there, so there slow that down again, and we're coming in, we've easily got enough fuel, I'll have to be a numpty if I can't land this, and I could be, I've proven it before, <laughs> alright, there we go, coming in nice, and slowly, slower, 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 There we go, we've landed it on the surface. Yay, victory me. Whoop, whoop. All right, let's turn off our brakes. Now, we can start driving across the surface and stuff. That's kind of what I wanted to test. Now, I know I was going to go to Midmus, but the rocket design's not quite there right now. Um, you know, it doesn't quite have enough fuel to get me to Midmus, so let's just test this bad, bad, on it, bad boy on here. Um, now if we look, we're going about 5 meters per second, which might seem slow, but it's actually blooming quick. It's around about 18 kilometers per, sec uh, kilometers per hour, I think, which is actually quite quick for a rover. So I'm going to slow down a little bit, and I'm going to drop off this. I've designed it to literally land, and then so I can decouple this fuel thing off of here. Now it could take off again, but it hasn't got enough fuel to get me anywhere, so let's decouple that. And drive this bad boy again. Uh oh, it's not letting me drive! No! It could be a fault in the design here because it doesn't look like I've got any control module on here. Never mind, as a proof of concept, it works. There's my little scanomatic saw system. And that's about all I wanted to show you. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it's given you some ideas for rover design and landing them. Um, and yeah, I'll check you out on the next video. Take care. Bye bye.